Hi guys, welcome to the last video on theory of flight and today I will be discussing about uh, rigging. So what is rigging? So it is a type of work which is done to ensure that the control surface will be operating correctly. So what exactly is this work? We try to see that the control surface movement and the control column movement are same and in line with each other. We check that the movement of the control surface, the extreme up movement or extreme down movement or the neutral are as per the uh, condition or as per the setting as given in the maintenance manual so this is all about the rigging of the flying control surface so what we can say in short regarding uh, rigging so it is uh, used to describe the practice of throwing and checking the system to ensure that the flying control operate correctly in accordance with the uh, flying control column or the control stick whatever it is now when do we need to carry out rigging at any time if you do any type of maintenance work on the control surface you need to carry out rigging if the aircraft had flown through turbulence, lightning strike or some abnormal incident or accident, in that case you need to carry out the rigging. If the aircraft made hard landing, heavy landing, belly landing, in that case you need to carry out rigging. If you carry out any maintenance work on the control surface, you need to carry out rigging. If you have installed a new uh, control surface you need to carry out rigging. If you have uh, installed a repaired or overall control surface you need to carry out rigging. If you do any maintenance work on the aircraft in which the CG of the aircraft could have probably changed in that case you need to carry out rigging. So these are the times that you need to carry out rigging apart from this at any other times as specified in the aircraft maintenance manual during the uh, you know sea of air renewal so these are the times when you need to carry out the rigging so what are the checks we need to uh, do before we actually go for the rigging so before we carry out rigging we need to ensure that there are no obstructions uh, that could damage the control surface when it is moved and you also need to put up this warning display that you are carrying out uh, rigging and that because you are carrying out rigging so you could operate the control surface and if any unnecessary people can come uh, or if uh, they might come in that case the control surface as well as the person can get the, the control surface could get damaged and the person can get hurt as well so a warning display is essential next is before you carry out the rigging make sure that the aircraft itself is level so the leveling is essential so there are two type of leveling longitudinal leveling and lateral leveling so you need to carry out the leveling as per the procedure mentioned in the relevant aircraft maintenance manual and then before you carry out the rigging definitely you need to ensure that all the parts that are involved in this rigging process are themselves serviceable you need to also check the cables if it is a cable operated or control rod or control tube if it is operated by that means so that they are free from corrosion there are no excessive movement they are free from wear and tear and a check for security of attachment check for freedom of movement 
and uh, if you find any of the thing which is not in accordance with the uh, limitation as specified in the aircraft maintenance manual in that case you are required to replace those components <coughs> what uh, next you need to do so the next thing you need to do is establish this neutral what is establishing neutral so prior to carry out rigging so let's say I, i'm required to carry out rigging so carrying out rigging means i need to see whether if i'm moving the control column by 10 degree so the control surface must move by 10 degree up or down whatever it is so it is moving 10 degree up or down with respect to the neutral so first of all to ensure that it is actually moving by 10 degree up or down i need to check the exact zero reading so exact zero reading implies check the neutral position so the first thing you need to do is establish the neutral so you are going to establish this neutral with respect to what so quite natural you will be uh, checking or establishing the neutral with respect to the fix surface so the first thing you need to do is establish this neutral next is you need to lock that in position so establish this neutral and lock that into position in certain cases the neutral might not be at the exact zero setting for example in case of a droop error in that case also you need to ensure that if it is not exactly at zero angle the neutral then what it is the angle whether some positive angle or negative angle so whatever it is you need to specify that and carry out the reading and the correction as per the setting so once you have established this neutral the next thing you need to do is lock so for locking what you are going to use so we'll be using the rigging pin for locking so what is rigging pin so before we start looking into rigging pin we need to you need to remember that uh, we'll have sets of rigging pin master rigging pin and the remaining will be the slave rigging pins so how it could be established so yeah, let's see about the control now this control is attached to a shaft and this shaft is a telescopic shaft so you have got one shaft underneath it there is one more shaft and whenever you are moving the control column you are moving the outer shaft with respect to the inner shaft so if you need to uh, lock the control so the best possible option would be if this inner shaft and the outer shaft got some holes in built into it and somehow if these two holes can be aligned and then if i put some pin or something so that there won't be any relative movement between the inside and the outside and that's how we can lock it and that exactly what rigging pin is so the rigging pin definitely with respect to different aircraft will have different type of rigging pin so the rigging pin is not like you know one universal and you can use it for every aircraft so each aircraft will have the rigging pin and it is provided by the manufacturer so the first rigging pin we call that as number one or the master uh, pin and it is fitted at the cockpit end of the control run and in conjunction with the control uh cockpit control neutral uh, setting bar once you establish this neutral lock it into position next is you need to adjust the neutral exactly if the neutral is perf perfectly you know if uh, control column is neutral if the control surface is perfectly neutral if the control surface is not perfectly neutral in that case you need to adjust the setting 
and adjustment of the setting implies either you will be changing the cable tension or you will be doing some changes in the uh, in, in, in the tensiometer using the tensiometer so basically increasing or decreasing the cable tension or if it is a uh, you know uh, control rod type maybe increasing or decreasing the length so these are the things that you need to do after you are, you are done the rigging uh, after you have established this neutral next thing is you need to remove the rigging pin and refit it back again so that to ensure that this can be done without any additional strain what exactly it indicates so this indicate that the system has been set up satisfactorily and that there is no backlash in the system and this is more important if the system is a cable operated type sorry i cannot look at i'm trying to look at the camera but then because i'm suffering from dengue and i'm having this pain so i cannot look at the camera the glare is having some problem finally it is vital to check that all the complete set of readings are removed from the aircraft on the completion of the work. <clears throat> Next is control surface setting gauge. When control surface setting gauges are provided, they are used to check the neutral and the maximum travel position uh, of the controllable aerofoil surface. Each gauge is manufactured for use with one specific surface. This gauge is uh, attached to the fixed surface of the aircraft. Next to the movable surface, now when the control is at neutral, the trailing edge of the control surface should coincide with the mm, neutral mark of the gauge. Now whenever you are moving away from the neutral position, it would correspond to the mark, the relevant mark. Let's say you are moving 10 degree up or 10 degree down, in that case, uh, I know it will correspond to the 10 degree up or down position with respect to this setting gauge. <coughs> the control surface movement can be quickly adjusted and it can be easily adjusted by uh, setting the gauge in that position and uh, let's say because you are moving by 10 degree up or 10 degree down and let's say it is not actually getting moved by 10 degree or you know maybe 11 degree or 12 degree or 9 degree so in that case again you need to adjust the cable tension and prep uh, we can stop that into position because now i'm adjusting the cable tension once i'm trying to adjust the cable tension the movement the, of the control surface could change as well so you need to restrict that movement and that is why we require some mechanical stops as well so there will be some mechanical stop to restrict the movement of the control surface in that particular position and then you adjust the uh, the cable tension or whatever next is checking for the sense of movement having established this neutral position the next stage is to ensure that the control being rigged operates the control surface in the correct sense so this is also very important that the movement of the control column and the movement of the control surface must correspond to each other and you must be able to move it without applying very undue forces 
Next is the mechanical stops. So you are moving the control column by certain degree and we want the control col uh, control surface to stop after it is being after it travels by certain amount let's say i want the control surface to to stop after it moves up to this limit so if i need to if i need the control surface to stop its movement after it travel by certain degree so i require some stop here and this stop is in the form of some bolt so this mechanical bolt is acting as some sort of a stop so if you are moving the control column by certain degree and once it comes and hit this stop after that it no longer can move so this is the mechanical stop let's say it is supposed to travel by 10 degree but then what we found is after it traveled by 9.9 .9 degree so it is no longer moving up to 10 degree so that means what i can do now is unscrew this uh, stop bolt little bit so that it can actually move by 10 degrees so that means these screws one in this side one in the other side can be adjusted to ensure that the movement the maximum movement in either side can be achieved and in order to manipulate this movement the maximum movement in either side of the neutral we have got this adjustable mechanical stop either we can screw in or screw out and then lock that into position and that would ensure that we get the appropriate travel limit <coughs> in powered uh, control system the mechanical stops are located on the input of the pfcu usually they are located next to the pilot control uh, in the cockpit thus limiting the control system movement from that position During the uh, rigging procedure, the main mechanical limit may need to reset to ensure that the control surface reaches but does not exceed its maximum travel position. <coughs> Next is checking for static and running friction. In order to move the control surface, you are required to apply force so the initial force you need to apply to break in the control surface from the neutral position to any other position so that force means now you need to overcome the force of the friction so this is the freak, uh, breakout force and the breakout force basically is the force against the friction because the friction is holding in uh, the control surface into neutral position and if you need the control surface to move beyond the neutral position in that case you need to apply force against the static friction so this is what static friction is all about now once you start moving it and then to in order to keep it uh, moving continuously again you need to apply force against the friction but now this friction is the dynamic friction or the running friction and quite natural that if I need to move so the first force or the static force definitely is higher than the kinetic force or the static friction is higher than the kinetic friction so the breakout force will be more than the running uh, force or the static friction will be more than the dynamic friction so initially to break out you require more force compared to keep it going <coughs> so the amount of uh, the static and the friction uh, running friction permissible in any aircraft driven control must not be exceeded and uh, it the, the limitation is specified in the aircraft maintenance manual Insufficient lubrication definitely will increase this friction value. After you are done with the uh, rigging, carry out the functional test uh, to ensure that no part of the system foul the airframe structure when operated over the full range of its travel. Check for the turnbuckles, adjust the end fittings, limit stop and uh, uh, well lock it into the position. Examine all the system and the supporting structure for security of attachment, check the cable alignment with respect uh, around the pulleys, lubricate the system as necessary with the correct lubric uh, lubricants uh, as specified in the aircraft maintenance manual, uh, examine the control surface to ensure they are not damaged in any way, uh, check for any FOD and then once you are done all this, 
next comes the duplicate inspection so whether it is airframe control or uh, the engine controls because controls are the most vital and essential part so considering that there could be some human error it is essential uh, it is very essential to ensure that it is done properly and appropriately because we cannot constantly and always depend on the human mind because there could be some error unforeseen error so in order to double ensure that the first person who carried out the inspection never did any mistake and was very correct it needs to be verified by a second person so we require the duplicate inspection so duplicate inspection will be carried out by an engineer or another qualified or suitable person as authorized by the aerodynamic authority of the country where the aircraft belongs okay Next, we'll look into uh, the rigging of uh, the uh, power-operated uh, flying control system. So, we'll look into uh, uh, this in terms of uh, three stages. Stage one: describe the operation required to rig the uh, rudder control in the cockpit. So we are looking at rigging of the power operated rudder control. So the first thing you need to do is disconnect all the control tubes and set the uh, pilot control that is the rudder pedal into neutral and lock it into position. Uh, next is connect the forward control tube to the rudder lever and make the necessary adjustment and then uh, insert the master rigging pin in the appropriate housing. Next is continue to continue to build up the uh, system pressure and uh, connect the various control tubes in their corresponding lever and adjusting as necessary and fit all the necessary rigging pins in their correct position. Stage two is set the control lever on the uh, uh, cable. Uh, tension regulator by, insert, by inserting the uh, subsidiary or the slave rigging pin. Set the artificial unit as described in the aircraft maintenance manual. Uh, set the trim actuator to neutral and connect to the artificial uh, fill unit. Uh, next is fit the control cable to the cable tension regulator and run the cables around the pulley. Next is connect the cable to the tie rods and uh, fit the cable around the pulley to the rear part of the fuselage. And then finally the stage 3 that is the final stage connect the cable to the cable quadrant and to the respective tie rods. Set the cable quadrant to neutral by inserting the uh, secondary uh, rigging pin. Then now you connect uh, the your dampers you know, <coughs> into the system and then uh, the control tube. Uh, to the uh, cable quadrant and to the PFCU, uh, adjust the system as necessary as detailed in the aircraft maintenance manual. Connect next is connect the uh, link rod to the rudder operating lever and adjust as necessary. After you tension the uh, cable as mentioned earlier, remove and reinsert the each of the rigging pin to ensure that the, the uh, it can be adjusted um, to the neutral position uh, and. Uh, uh, Unlock the control circuit by removing all the rigging pins and the rudder pedal locking device. Next, check the system for friction, carry out the necessary checks after rigging and then finally you carry out the duplicate inspection. Next is the rigging of the uh, trimming tab system. So, to rig the trimming uh, tab system, set the jack, jack screw in the midway neutral position. So the midway of the jack screw is the neutral position and uh, ensure that the operating chain is equally disposed along the sprocket. Tighten the turn buckle evenly and obtain the correct tension with the elevator in line with the uh, tail plane that means now it is neutral. Adjust the operating rod until the tab is in line with the elevator. So this is done to establish this neutral. Next is operate the trim tab and check for its freedom of operation and then check for the correct sense in relation to the uh, control wheel operate uh, sorry uh, next is uh, measure the uh, 
travel of the trimming tab uh, which uh, as uh, specified in the uh, aircraft maintenance manual carry out the checks after rigging and then do the duplicate inspection the last topic that i will be discussing is uh, in uh, whenever you do the rigging as i told you that uh, we have got uh, this lock so we have got generally we'll have two sets of locks one of the lock will be in the control column and the other lock will be in the control surface uh, so one of when you will find that the lock the control surface will hit the uh, stop earlier and still there will be some movement possible for the control column before it strikes the uh, stop bolt installed in the control column and this is done for a purpose and the purpose is it is possible that the control column sorry control surface has reached its maximum position and then it hit that uh, stop bolt and it no longer can move now suppose assume a situation where the aircraft is flying through turbulence and there is some additional load acting on the control surface and because of this the control surface would try to move but then because the control surface already hit the uh, stop bolt so it no longer can move but then this load need to be transmitted it is only possible that the load can get transmitted to other part of the aircraft if there is a provision of some movement and that is why this tolerance is given so that if any additional load is acting on the control surface that load will be transmitted from the control surface to the control cable or the control rod and the control cable and the control rod can move a little bit and that would and in that case it would allow it to take that additional load okay so uh, that is all about the uh, the rigging what so we've got the flyby wire system and uh, flyby optical fiber of, uh, system so uh, because the uh, this is for the mechanical part so i won't be going into fly-by-wire and fly-by optical wire system just remember that we have got these two type of system where fly-by-wire and fly-by optical wire fly in case of fly-by-wire we are using the electrical uh, um, uh, circuit uh, and the electronics to transmit uh, the signals from the transmitter to the receiver and then apart from this uh, we apart from uh, transmitting the information by using electrical we can also use optics for that so if you are using optical signals to transmit the information from the transmitter to receiver in that case quite natural there won't be any energy loss so that is one of the prime advantage of using fiber uh, flyby optical wire system compared to the flyby wire system and next is uh, because I am using optical fiber so I can send more information compared to the electrical so if you are using fiber optic in that case you can send more information compared to the uh, fiber wire technology and also it would be of uh, you know the weight will be lesser so you can send more information the weight will be less mm. And there won't be any energy loss so these are the advantage of fly by uh, <coughs> optical wire compared to the fly by wire technology that's it for the rigging part thank you <coughs>